Warning from the leaked IPCC report is dire. While life on Earth can recover from a drastic climate shift, humans cannot. Growth has been the goal of our economic system for decades. The linear paradigm gave business leaders a, a laser focus, but it rests on a flawed set of ideas, and it gave us the IPCC's warning. It can't sustain us. If we want to stick around, we need a paradigm shift. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a writer, a university lecturer, and I publish the Wicked Problems Collaborative, an independent press that focuses on humanity's biggest challenges. I also do a lot of work to help create the circular economy. Several years ago, I was dealing with a lot of stress, and I had some worrisome health events. I passed out in the shower two days in a row. I spent a week at the hospital for tests. The results came back clean, but then I passed out again. I awoke to a nightmare. Worried-looking doctors and nurses were running at me with a crash cart. Fortunately, they didn't need it. Things started to calm down as they saw me regain consciousness, but the mood in the room had changed. I then met with a doctor who was trying to convince me that I was in serious danger. But I was exhausted, and his message wasn't getting through. He then grabbed the paper from the EKG machine, showed me it, and said, "Do you see this? You were legally dead there." That was my paradigm shift. My circumstances had changed, and I had a choice to make. I could adapt to my new reality, or I might not be part of it for long. I'm here to offer humanity a similar wake-up call. Philosopher Martin Hagelin tells us, "Human beings are the only species on Earth that does not know how we are supposed to live." Think about that. Species evolve to adapt to their circumstances, or they go extinct. That's where we are. It's time to find ways to live that our planet can sustain. Three ideas are critical to the needed shift. One, waste is a verb. Don't think of it as a noun. Think of it as acts that are careless, extravagant, or purposeless with resources. We design such waste into our lives. We need to design it out. If you sell products made of plastic that's not recycled where you sell it. You designed waste. Two, there are no simple solutions to complex challenges; they don't exist. We need to stop looking for them. And the evolutionary nature of these challenges means that what works today might not work for long. We need to design responses that come at these problems from multiple directions, while also adapting to change. Three. Access enables scale. If the change you are trying to make requires the latest tech, few people will have access. But if you can find ways to convert wasted resources using widely available tech, almost anyone can take part. These are somewhat complex or abstract、uh, concepts. Fortunately, there are people who are who are creating similar changes. And there are great examples here in Thailand. The one I've had the most fun with is the Circular Design Lab, an effort I started with three of my university colleagues, Courtney, Prewa, and Jet. We teach systemic design to community members who want to drive positive change. I love watching people engage with the abstract concepts we teach. It can be confusing at first. But before long, we have a new group of systems thinkers who are looking at problems differently. 
One of the exciting efforts to come out of CDL is a partnership with Thailand's Clean Air Network. They're working together to get a Clean Air Act discussed in Thailand's parliament. CDL believes that everyone who wants to can make a difference. I also teach at Thomas Ott University's School of Global Studies in the Social Enterprise Program. Our students gain confidence working with complex issues in an active learning environment. Early in the pandemic, farmers struggled to get their produce into Bangkok. Mo and Pearl, two of our former students, started Happy Grocers in response to that need. They work to create to support sustainable food systems, and they do, through, do so through a variety of approaches. My favorite is serving the ugly produce that most grocers reject. Happy Grocers shows us ways to make our food systems more sustainable. Did you know there's a farm in the center of Bangkok? My friend New is a co-founder of Wasteable, Bangkok's rooftop farm near Victory Monument. They take in food waste from local restaurants, convert it into beautiful compost, and then they use it to grow produce that they sell into the local community. Wasteable demonstrates circular food systems in the city. At Trash Lucky, Nat is working to create a circular economy for plastics. They started with the Trash to Raffle program, where they gave away prizes like gold to encourage people to recycle. They've since started programs with schools, businesses, urban communities, and condos, and they've tailored each of those to meet the local needs. Trash Lucky shows us the benefits of dealing with complex challenges in different ways. Kun Rungtip leads the Home Economics Lab at Kasetsart University. Her team uses basic tech, things like sewing machines, to keep resources from becoming waste. I love to visit their lab. Every time I go there, they're running interesting experiments to come up with new possibilities. To me, it's a magical place. My social enterprise, Linear to Circular, is partnering with them on our Morph Bags project. They're helping us develop bags, totes and bags, other bags, from materials that would otherwise go to landfill. Kun Rung Tip's lab shows us endless ways to reuse resources with available tech. Each of these efforts was started to help out with, with real needs. And the people that lead these programs all embody these three ideas. Waste is a verb, no simple solutions, and access enables scale. We can learn a lot from each of them. David Graeber told us that the ultimate hidden truth of the world is that it is something we create and we could just as easily make differently. We need to recognize this truth and act on it. The IPCC report was humanity's EKG. We're living beyond our means, but we have a choice. We can choose a paradigm shift for a sustainable future, or we can continue to accept the consequences. I'm asking you to choose the shift and join me in working to make it happen. Think about the needs you see in the world. Which one would you most like to change? What world do you want to make? Thank you.